Okay, now if I can ask you to step off for a second. Yo. I'll introduce you. Cool. <laughs> can you hear it with is that how it goes i haven't i haven't practiced much lately okay here we go can you hear it with your ears can you see it with your eyes can you feel it wiggling between your quivering thighs that thing that thing that thing with james once every millennium something will come along when you feel it, you will know it, cause it's coming on strong. That thing, that thing, that thing with James. Sit back, relax, deep breaths, no stress. Let me come inside your mind. I promise you it won't take long, the change will happen soon You will feel something so special growing deep within you That thing, that thing, that thing with James That thing, that thing, that thing with James That's me Hi, welcome to episode 12 of That Thing with James J. Asher II. That's me! We've got yet another, yes, you guessed it, special episode for you today. I have another guest, Mark Friedman! Yay! Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hello. How are you doing, man? I'm all right. So I just discovered you handed me this a second ago, and then... I took a big sip and I was like, wow, carbonated beverages right before you're about to go on camera? Probably not the best <laughs> idea in the world. For some reason, I feel like carbonated beverages kind of dry me out a bit. Well, they also make me want to burp. Oh, dude, you can burp away. No, I, I hear you, but burp, I you just fart. got here. I don't want to like have that be the introduction to, <laughs> to Mark. Oh, it's Belcher. <laughs> you don't have to change your last name. <laughs> Mark Belcher. <laughs> so, uh, just before this... We were talking about... Uh, Lots of things. P the Puffin Dragon. Oh, Piff the Magic Dragon. Piff the Magic Dragon. Right. So, Piff, uh, one of the uh, one of my... Well, me and my wife. Um, one of the things that we like watching is America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. Just dig it for some reason. Because it's nice to see people, you know, those kinds of shows. Still exist people with talent. So, there's this guy called Piff the Magic Dragon. It was on a couple years ago. He's from England. Dresses up in a dragon outfit. Um, and he's got this little dog called he calls Mr. Piffles that he also puts on a little yeah, yeah, yeah that he also puts in a little dragon outfit and it's Mr. Piffles and he's a magician slash comedian um, and he's hilariously brilliant. The dog is a comedian. <laughs> I guess I should have put it in, contextualize it. Piff the magic dragon is the comedian. His dog is there for moral support, I think. Uh, oh. Emotional support. <laughs> emotional, it's an emotional support dog. <laughs> Lest Piff have a nervous breakdown on stage. Exactly. Which might also be Which there's be a good chance, because if you've watched him, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be a shock to see that happen. But yeah, so we're excited. Should be funny. Um, I need, could use a good laugh. Um, and Piff is playing here in Austin. Where? At Paramount? Theater, I think. Oh, on Congress, right? On Congress. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Saturday night we'll be there. If anyone wants to come say hi, I'll be there in this hat probably. So I'm easy to pick out. Piff the Magic Dragon. Piff the Magic Dragon. This Saturday? This Saturday. The, Paramount. Uh, what date is that? People are going to miss this. I'll put this up on Sunday. <laughs> See, this is why we carry these pocket computers. So you can... Uh, uh, today's the 10th. Today, so that's the 13th. 13th. Surprisingly enough, though, I don't have it, like, actually labeled in my calendar. Here, mm. I'll do it right now. Piff the Magic Dragon. So if you were here, so you'd be there. Except I put it for 8 o'clock in the morning, but whatever. 
It's all good. So yeah, there you go. That's the story yeah. of my life this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what else were we talking about? We actually had some funny crap that we were talking about earlier, and now that I told you we're actually on, um, isn't it interesting how before you do a thing, like when you have a set thing to do, when you're setting up, when there's no official thing going on, we got some spillage. See? And that's the official thing, is spillage. (laughs) Oh, that's not bad. I'll get it. Didn't mean to grow up you. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, folks. I just kind of spilled some of that carbonated water. <laughs> the floor needed a cleaning. Okay. So I told you it was dangerous. So. <laughs> I'm put that there so I can actually look at it and see it. Uh, uh, Anyway, so you're saying, yeah, the setup, when you're setting something up, when you got something planned and you're setting something up, like when you got something like this planned, you have, you have, um, you have a movie playing on your phone. (laughs) Oh, I do. What is this? An ad for some kind of car? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Nothing even interesting. Somehow I got on IMDb. I don't know why or how. And then, yeah. Ooh, look, I have a notification on LinkedIn. Let's talk about that. You're on LinkedIn a lot. <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't know because I'm not even looking for a job, but it's just, it, I, I don't know what it is. There's just something, again, it's still a way of um, of being a voyeur, just looking into other people's lives. Like, what is, I don't care what Lucas Blank just got a promotion in. I don't care, but I'm looking at it again. Um, I so you're not even touring for the articles. You're just looking just, at people. Just you're like lurking. Seeing, like, and... Yeah, what? Oh my gosh, like this girl. I don't care about that, but th- she just got hired. She, and right. then you got a notification saying like, congratulate right. someone for like yes. their third year at this job. Exactly. Or they were at a job for like three months, quit to go to another job. So now I'm supposed to congratulate them on, you know, being the kind of person that jumps jobs every three or four months. Um, Dude, what happens between those jobs, though? What's the story? Do you ever wonder, like, what the fuck happened to Janet with the comptroller job? The assistant comptroller job? I think Janet was posting some, like, articles from AA. (laughs) (laughs) You see what I'm talking about? You can make up stories for these people, man. You can. I think think why I don't see postings from her anymore is that she was arrested... Sent back to Mexico, even oh, though she's Canadian. Shit. What exactly? Anywho, right, right. So just looking into people's lives, like instead of looking into their social lives, you're looking into their business, corporate lives. Which, in the end of it all, who really cares? Those people and me, apparently, <laughs> and you, because I'm on it. <laughs> I wonder how many people are on there saying, why the fuck am I on here? I'm going to say less than a percent because most people actually give a crap. I'll try it. We can cuss on this thing. We, they, yeah, people actually, yeah. yeah, people actually like give a shit about other people. Yeah. I guess I do too, kind of. Well, I think you do care about these people because you're reading their stories. Right. You care, you care enough to see what the hell's going on in their lives. Right, but do I care in a way that's like empathetic and sympathetic? Or do I care in a way that's like, I can't believe this fucker got promoted at a job I got fired from even though I was a better worker than that person? I think probably both just depends on the uh, situation. Because let me tell context. you how many times I actually do get on LinkedIn and I see that someone... That's still at the same company I got fired from, get a promotion. I'm just like, what yeah. is this fucking world coming to? And you know that that person probably didn't really deserve it? Has that ever occurred? Of course. Well, you know, people show up to work drunk and still get promoted. Or at least don't lose their jobs. Right. But whatever. Whatever. I like my job. I'm good. Um... No, I got to get into, like, back into comedy. 
So you used to do comedy. Let's talk about that. Well, I mean, you still do. It's well, still and you, you say that you want to get into comedy. I do. I want to get so into it. So we should it. talk yeah. about... We like, should talk about this. Yeah. Okay, look. So here's the deal. All right. This is what I learned about comedy. It's like I told you earlier before we got on this thing. Mm-hmm. As long as you can make one person laugh, and that person can genuinely laugh at you and with you, right. I don't care if they're laughing at me, because um, at least they're laughing, mm-hmm. um, you've got the room. Because everyone will follow suit. It's just the way of of people. So what if you only just have one for the night? Is isn't that still a win? Like because one person least, in the room for your entire set. One person in the room laughed at everything. Everyone else just had their arms crossed, but you got one person to go. <laughs> oh, you just focus on. Well, you just play well, with. Wouldn't people. that be a win too? Absolutely. Because at least you didn't lose the whole fucking room. Even losing a room, unless you're Michael Richards. Just don't drop the N-bomb, obviously. Yeah. Um, even losing a room is could be a win. If you Because you're still it. walking away with... with your, they, they are still walking away with you in, in their heads. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not an asshole. That's the whole thing. Just don't be an asshole. Or be genuine about being an asshole. Sometimes it works, or a lot of times it doesn't work. I've seen a lot of pro comedians out there that are fucking cocksuckers that they're just like not uh, off stage. They're still assholes, kind of a thing, right? Or even just on stage, it's like just don't be just, just don't be a cocksucker on stage. Don't you don't have to insult people to be funny. Yeah, I know what you're talking about because I've been to a few open mics and there's a lot of. Uh, mean there's a lot, there of, a lot mean of mean going on and i don't find that i mean some people think huh you know i'm just joking with you it's just right, a joke. Right, right, right. No, i no, don't no. buy that kind of shit that's just fucking bullying no matter where you are you know right no agreed um the only person i'm mean to in my sets is me self-deprecation yeah i'm mean to myself i mean not severely mean not overly mean like i don't mind talking about you know being a jew i have a tiny dick <laughs> i don't I mean, it's okay. It's not tiny, but I don't mind you saying that for my bit because people expect that, but they don't when they hear it. But you're not putting that on anyone else. You're, right, right. Yeah. I'm talking about me and my giant forehead and my tiny penis. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get into comedy? Did you know... How long have you been interested in it, would you say? Mm. Probably the first time I saw David Cross live. What? Uh, it was right after 9-11. And he was really the only comedian on the tour doing 9-11 jokes, but like against the established government, not like the people involved that were dead. You know, not those folks, but like, I can't even remember the leadership at that time, but it was obviously W, but his, his people. Um, and he was brilliant and he did it at... Um, it's not there anymore. It was, um, God damn it. Right there downtown. It's now part, it's not all condos. Here in Austin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It was a great music venue. Um, and it's where the condos are, like on West 6th? Uh, it's like near Whole Foods-ish. Um, okay. Damn it, wow. This is pre Yeah, God Asian. damn it, hasn't been. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's yeah. Been so, I mean, this was, it just shut down a few years ago, but now I just can't remember the name of it. Uh, it was under Rosa. There we go. What is under Lizana Rosa? I've never heard of that place. See, there you go. Huh. Lizana Rosa is a great little club, but it was a music venue, and he went on tour, and he was like, you know what? Fuck comedy clubs, because in a comedy club, you only get an hour set, mm-hmm. um, and then everybody in there, you got You have a two drink minimum, right? Which right. fucking sucks. Yeah. So he was like, if I just play music clubs, he's like, I'll have an opening band, right? And then I can play for two hours. That's fucking smart. Which is what he did, um, and it's a different type of crowd. Dude, and you're standing, and it's like you stay. You're not sitting down, you know, getting all comfy and falling asleep. You're actually standing, like you would if you were at a, at a concert, right? Right. Because that's what it was. It was a comedy concert. Um, so that's what got me into. So I guess what seventeen years ago, Jesus Christ. Um, and then my acting coach uh, started doing uh, a stand up class. Um, so my wife and I both took it and I kind of, I, I kind of 
gravitate. I, I became very. It was very easy for me. Who's your acting coach? Uh, Liz Reeder, Neubauer, Studio E. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Studio E. Studio E. I mumbled that. Liz Reeder, Neubauer, Studio E. Oh, should um, get on to you for that? I mean, I might as well plug, <laughs> plug it properly. Um, so I'm having mumbleitis. You liked it there? Yeah. Taught me how to be a comedian. Um, so things that I learned from that is one, you play to the room that you're given, not the room you want. Right. Um, so if you get a bunch of, you know, 80 year old biddies, um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you get a bunch, you get a room full of that and your set is completely blue. Mm-hmm. Change it. Yeah. Where's your, where's your, where's your backup shit? Right. Where's your 80 year old woman set? Right. Cause that's what you need right now. Um, don't go rocking in there talking about, you know, cocks and pussies and assholes and farts. See, I see. I made this fucking mistake at the last open mic I did. Oh, God. Which, uh, it was a room full of adults. It was later at night. It was like, uh, I think I went on at like 1030 on a Friday. That's a good time, kind of. Yeah. And um, it was like a mixed show kind of a thing. So it wasn't just stand up. It was like any kind of act, but mm-hmm, it was mostly mm-hmm. stand ups and... Uh, Musicians. A little bit of musicians, okay. mostly improv troops oh, playing. Interesting. Um, I forget the name of the theater it was at, but it's on like South Congress next to that big water tower, um, whatever that place is. Oh, over there, at the, like the Moon Tower area. Yeah, yeah. Like south so. of Ultra, uh, south of Slaughter. No, it's before Slaughter. It's before Ben White on Congress. Oh. Just before Ben White. It's where oh. like. I, I don't fucking know. I don't know. Oh, oh, it's oh, like Penn up, Field. Penn, up in Penfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah, in there. Got you, got you. Okay. It's next to like a fucking factory, like a bottling factory or something like oh. that. Yeah. Well, I, I, that was the last open mic I did sometime, I think, like last, I don't know, July or August or something. Uh-huh. And I had the story planned out. Uh-huh. And it was a pretty blue story. Okay. And I get there. And, I mean, it's it's all adults, I'm assuming, but one guy, and it's one of the producers of this whole event, Okay, has his, like, 10-year-old daughter with him. Oh. And, you know what? I just said, fuck it. Fuck it. I just told the story. And I felt super awkward, but I got one woman to laugh at me. <laughs> I got one woman right up front. She did a woo when I mentioned Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I felt awful for like the next I came home and I felt a mixture of um, pride uh, you know uh, and uh, disgust with myself for no no disgust <laughs> no disgust if a guy if a guy's gonna bring his 10 year old daughter to an event like that he Late knows night. at that time of night he knows what's gonna what's going on yeah whatever well he could have taken his kid Either way, that little girl learned about cunnilingus that night. Nice, dude. <laughs> dude, it is never too early to learn. Never. Um, yeah, I never. It's a subject that should be discussed and embraced in our fucking society. That solve a lot of. It problems. kind of is. It would solve a ton of issues. Yeah, I've yeah. never. I've never. I don't think I've ever had to play to like a child. God, that sounded really bad. <laughs> I've never had to do a stand-up bit in front of a kid. It's, what I meant to say. Um, uh, what's standing up? Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, my comedy bits have always been usually mostly in front of adults. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I've never had to. Oh, no. Untrue. So yeah, in ter- speaking of rearranging what you're talking about, my wife and I were Jewish and we had to do uh, uh, something for something at my synagogue. And they're like, Mark and Stacy, would you do your stand-up bit for us? And I was like, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> at synagogue? Well, no. This was at home. I had to, in my head, I was like, oh, fuck. So I had to literally, 98% of my material, I had to either re- change words out. Mm-hmm. Or, like, I can't talk about being a stoner. Like, mm-hmm. can't. No go. No go. Pot humor gone can't do it yeah so there's 15 percent of my bit gone um can't talk about my jewish penis my right. aforementioned jewish penis right i mean i could because you know no one really cares but still it's pushing it, it it's 
What did you did you say? It's pushing That's it. That's what I thought you just said. If you were like, yeah, I know what you were just. I know what you just said. Pushing it. Never mind. <laughs> Um, you don't want to push your penis on your synagogue. <laughs> right, right. Um, so no, I had to change, I had to change a lot of stuff, but it actually worked out okay because it was still funny. And, uh, as long as you think it's funny, if you can laugh at something, yeah. um, people will laugh, like I said earlier, if nothing else, they'll laugh at you. So how do you come up with material? My life. Watching, just watching people. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, uh, Stephen Miller, the guy, you know, part of Trump's uh, White House. Oh, that bald dude. Fucking, right, that guy. Isn't, I could, isn't he Jewish? <laughs> His fucking family is yeah, like they, they so, Yeah, they're like, <laughs> no. That guy's fucking evil. You know how old he is? He's like 32. Yeah, he looks like fucking He's like, yeah, shit. He, yeah. he looks like yeah, a dude. zombie. It's what, it's like what the, it's like what a dark hearted soul will do to you will do to you yes um i always say that you can fucking it transforms the face like the fucking sith you know totally 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 yeah. and i mentioned on facebook i was like he looks like the dude that would uh that would sit at the corner of the bar watching you and following you home because he knew how much you had to drink and then cutting you up to pieces or something yeah something yeah so i'll get you know like if i were doing a stand up bit i would definitely Pull that in, and then I'll talk about him. Right. Because someone actually replied when I made that comment on a picture of him. Someone told me that I actually outdid Stephen Colbert on commenting about what that guy looks like. I so I was like, um, okay, <laughs> I'll take that. Hell yeah. Someone thinks I was better than Col- <laughs> the Col- <laughs> Stephen Colbert for one moment. I'll take it. I will take it, goddammit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, everyday life, dude. I did this whole bit about um, having to go to the store to buy my wife tampons. I mean, that's an adventure, dude. There's a whole scenario right there. Yeah, and it's true. It's like legitimately for real. And you got to get the right kind. The most awkward moment I will that I have every month if I have to go do it is standing in front of the a bo- those boxes and trying to remember. Which type she wanted. And they all fucking look the same. They the all The boxes do. have the same fucking design, especially if mm-hmm. it's the same mm-hmm. company. Mm-hmm. Well, they're meant to confuse us, so we have to go back and buy more. Yeah. Because they're never the right ones. But yeah, so that's where I that's where I pick them. Um, that's where I find my, my shit. Or I just listen to people and talk about them. So, I've got a funny Jewish story for you. Okay. Uh, have you ever been to Starseed's Diner on... 35. No, it's, it's I mean, right where I yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I have not because my wife always told me that it was the worst like service in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as a waiter, I was like, fuck that. It's no, it's a piece of shit. That's why you go there is because it's 24 hours. Right. It's a piece of shit. It's rock bottom. That's why it's great to hang out at. I, I haven't been there in a number of years, okay. but when I first moved here, I fucking hit that shit up. Really? Because I I love you. Are liter- you are literally shit. the first person that I've had a a conversation with that has said that to me. That's eaten there. Oh yeah, dude. And it ain't all bad, especially <laughs> if you're <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> but okay, so I went there for the first time like during the day. Mm-hmm. It was like you know three in the afternoon. And I get a booth, I'm sitting, I've ordered, I'm waiting for my food. And there's a couple of, um, on the older end of middle-aged dudes, uh, standing next to the counter in there. And they're buddy-buddy, they're just having a conversation. And up above the counter, there's like a, I don't know, kind of like a wall that has pictures of all the regulars. And these two guys, they were standing there pointing out this picture of them as regulars, but like 20 or 30 years younger. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, and then we came here after this thing. Like the guy remembered the whole scenario once he saw the picture. Wow. The flashback. And he's like, yeah, and this was us. Like, I remember you just came from so-and-so's wedding, yada, yada, yada. And the friend's nodding his head and he's like, weird, you look Jewish there. And his friend looks at him and says, I am Jewish. They've known each other for 30 years. (laughs) 
On that note, let's take a quick break. Oh, people. And then we'll get back to it. So, since I always forget to say this, well, I don't always forget to say it, but it's kind of hard for me to remember to say this in the middle of my episode, so I'm saying it now. Um, if you have questions, comments, suggestions, or if you need advice, I've got answers for you. You can email me at thatthingwithjames at gmail.com. I'm good at giving advice. It's not always good advice, but I'm good at talking. That thing with James at gmail.com. Also, if you got some extra change lying around, please pay a visit to my Patreon account. I, um, I have a link in my description, usually. And uh, it's patreon.com slash that thing with James. Patreon.com slash that thing with James. Uh, so if you want to help support this show, by all means, you're welcome to. I've got different payment things, uh, different payment uh, levels, whatever it's called. Also, um, if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel uh, and tell your friends about the show. Who knows? They might like it. They might glean some knowledge out of it. Uh, also, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, both with the handle at James J. Asher, and I also have a website, jamesjasher.com. All right, back to the show. Come on, bedtime, yo. Oh, no. No, it's all good. Okay. On my drive over here, I was like, man, I'm going to be so lame because I'm about to fall asleep. And I was like, no, no, I can't do it. I was like, just call him and say, can we do it Saturday afternoon? Afternoon, I would be the jam because... I'm all energetic. Oh, uh, I didn't. I, I could have done it Saturday afternoon. I didn't we can always do another one of these. Okay. All right. If you uh, let's. Oh yeah. So let's. Okay. So have you started rolling? Uh yeah, we're rolling. Oh good. Let me make sure. You, now you got me second guessing myself. That, that's what I do. Uh, yeah, we're rolling. Cool. All right. So uh, I want to talk about this for a second. The second we were talking about this, and people are making fun of the picture because it's kind of funny. But the black hole that we just found. Right. So, right. so let's break it down in case someone hasn't read the news. So they they finally <coughs> got the algorithms together. To they had all these telescopes lined up. What was it called? The um, what was it called? Program. Um, I, I there's I a specific there was a specific name for it um, for the program that's that set up all that's yeah 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 totally 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 okay and uh, and. Um, Anyway, so, right, they finally were able, ah, here we go, they were finally able to, like, figure everything out and get a picture of this thing, and, oh, the Event Horizon Telescope, because the 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 ring around a black hole is called the Event Horizon, like, the really shitty sci-fi movie. Yeah. From, like, fit, did you ever see that with uh, I did. Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah, dude. Dude, yeah. kind of good, kind of bad, kind of good, kind of bad. It's got Lawrence Fishburne. But it's got Larry Fishburne. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's about the event horizon, like, going over the edge to, like, to nothingness. Yeah. So that's what these, this array of telescopes are called. We're called event horizon. So they finally were able to take a picture of this thing today mm -hmm. after, like, never knowing what, uh, like, and literally proved Albert Einstein's theory of relativity in one fell swoop. Hell yeah. Dude, it's fucking kick-ass. And, as I mentioned, they found it in the constellation Virgo. And you're a Virgo. And that's my sign. So I'm thinking something cool should be coming up. Hopefully, maybe. What kind of thing would you want to happen because of it? I don't know. Well, now that you ask me, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> something cool. <laughs> no, I want a Ferrari. No, I don't. No, I don't know. World peace. No, I don't know. Wow. Find twenty bucks on the ground, dude. That would be. I so, I would love to someone for someone to walk up to me when I walk out of this apartment and say, you know what, sir. Uh, just because I like your hat, I'm going to fill up your tank of gas. Whoa. Because I could use that. I'm not like at a quarter tank and gas is getting more expensive. What white people problem? First world problems, right? Um, but that would be cool. Someone just fill up my gas tank. That'd be awesome. Dude, I would take that in a second. Save me 20 bucks. Fuck yeah. 25. Hell yeah. Two years ago, I actually did find 20 bucks on the ground. You walk into my car after work downtown. <laughs> it was right next to the tire. I was like, fuck. Yes! You're like, sweet. Snacks. <laughs> Snacks. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so um, I think that's pretty cool because science is awesome. We're talking about how much we both like science. Science is awesome. I like to talk about science on this show. Cool. That's I like subject. to talk about science all the time. I feel like uh, uh, recently, within the past few years, there was another thing that was discovered that also kind of like um, uh, verified the special theory of relativity where they were able to barely, just barely, but they were able to actually pick up gravitational waves. Like at a research oh. center in Arizona. Out of Arizona? Yeah. Um, I think it was. Yeah, probably because they have a lot of, they have a lot of sciencey shit out there. Yeah. Um, wow, I did not know that. They, Gravita- they picked up gravitational waves. Right. And before that, it had just been like, well, it makes sense. Like we've got every a sign pointing toward its existence, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we just Boy. haven't captured it yet. Well, they, it was very slight, but they recorded How it. does one, like, with radio waves? Or how does one capture... <sighs> Dude, I don't even remember how it all went, but it was like, they just picked up some very trace particles moving in a certain, certain type of particle moving a certain way that was like, that wouldn't be possible without gravitational waves. Right, right. That's not the God particle, is it? Um... It might have been the boson. It might have, might be. Might have been. Because it did just find this god particle a few years ago. Right, right, right. I think it might It might be been. the same thing. Because now that my brain is actually actively working mm-hmm. and kind of going back through my Rolodex, yeah. I think they did kind of mention that in, in conjunction with uh, the theory of relativity. It, yeah, it must have been the boson. So. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Science. 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 <laughs> yeah. Science. It's so fucking cool. Science is cool. I wish more people believed in it. One of the... Th- I showed you the science book I had earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, I, totally. I feel like I mentioned this. Holy shit, dude. I just had the wildest flashback. You ever have flashbacks where, like, you feel like you remember it from a dream you had? Yeah, like deja vu. Like deja vu, but you feel like you might have actually had a dream about it. Uh, I have those all the time. I... Just this moment when I mentioned that book mm-hmm. and then i had a thought and i was like i think i fucking and stabbed seen you this. back to that yeah dude i've done that before so well anyway i mentioned this book like every episode <laughs> um but there was one part uh where he was getting into uh different types of pressure uh air pressure and then different pressure when you're underwater like when you're diving when you go too fast you can't go too fast because if you go too fast either up or down through really deep didn't Queen Water? and David Bowie write a documentary t- style song about that? I don't know, but it... Something about pressure and being under... I don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway. Actually, yeah. But yeah, so he's talking about so the different types of pressure. You 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 kind of go mad a little bit because you're... Something, your body, your blood will start producing like a crazy amount of nitrogen. Mm, yeah, sure, sure. Well, that's and what happens when you get um, the... Uh, uh, when you come up from the ocean too fast. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you get you get uh, nitrogen saturated blood, and right, you, you start you, you laugh, you start laughing at shit, you go mad, and then you die, and then you die. Yeah, which I mean, if you're you know have laughing, having a good time, well, better right. time to die, you know. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> so, were you acting before you got into comedy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell yeah, me about, about uh, how you get into all that. Uh, um, 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 um. I was a kid actor. No, I kind of was, kind of wasn't. I don't know. I didn't really give a shit one way or the other. Actually, before I met my wife, because my wife, every time I say those two words, I always feel like I have to sound like, I hate my wife. She she did it for me. Anyway, um, so it's a funny story. I actually moved out to L.A. Um, a couple years before I met my wife. Mm-hmm. And um, because my two best friends lived out there. Mm-hmm. The one that one that had to leave New Orleans because of Katrina, mm-hmm. and one that actually was, became a lawyer out there. Now he works for 20th Century. Well, now Disney. He's a lawyer for Disney now. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds like a pretty cush job. Yeah, no, he doesn't have the worst job in the world. Yeah. Um, so I moved out there just because, like, oh, L.A., my two best friends, mm-hmm. L.A. Uh, no intention of acting, none of that bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I did want to be like Ari Gold from Entourage. I wanted to be an agent. Really? That's what I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to be the guy behind the guy. All right. So I actually started working for an agent out there um, for free because he's he was a nice guy, but he sucked. 
Right. His agency was like awesome in the 80s because of the people that he still had on, on in his stable. Like mm-hmm. uh, he had Howie Most, Rough Mouth from Happy Days, mm-hmm. um, Tina Yothers, the, the blonde sister from Family Ties. Um, he also had, uh, gosh, I wish I could remember his name. Uh, the guy that was, uh, the black guy that was, uh, the bald dude that was Apollo Creech, uh, trainer in the two rock, first two Rockies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when Apollo Creed died, oh no, the, all the Rockies. And then when Apollo Creed died in Rocky four, he started training, uh, Rocky to fight Apollo, uh, the Russian guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he was there. Um, God. Oh, and a couple kids that were like. On this show called Waverly Place, I think is what it was called. That sounds familiar. I think it was Waverly like Disney Place. or Nickelodeon or some shit. I think Disney. Um, yeah, yeah, Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah. That's what it was yeah, called. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that didn't really work out. So I actually had to try to get a real job. And in LA, if you don't have like a really complicated hairdo and headshots and you know, you're really pretty, which I wasn't and I'm not. Um Folks, I had to grow into this look. This didn't just happen. Um, I didn't get a job. Um, so I had to leave L.A. Mm-hmm. And um, funny story about that is about a week after I got back to San Antonio, I started getting phone calls from restaurants that I had applied to saying, Hey, Mark, do you still want that job? I'm like, motherfucker, where were you a week ago? Um, Isn't that how it goes? Yeah, and I'm sure shit wasn't about to turn around and drive back to L.A. That's a two-day drive. Yeah. Fuck that noise. Yeah. Um, so my, I stayed back to San Antonio, met my wife, moved to Austin. She's an actor, met her agent. Her agent was like, Mark, you're so funny and personable and you've got all this personality and you're so charismatic. Blah, blah, blah. I would love to sign you, but I need you to take acting classes. So hooked up with my wife's acting teacher to become an actor with this agent. And um, that was what? I don't know. Eight, nine years ago now? I mean, I haven't been that successful. It's, you know, I get paid. I'm a professional actor. I'm not a working actor. Yeah. Big difference, people. There is a big difference. Big difference. I've talked about that on here, too. Yeah, I can't yeah. live off of what I make from my once every now and again um, booking. Yeah, I've been, dude, I've been wondering about this stuff. Because I just feel fucking crazy sometimes. Like, am I totally delusional? <laughs> you know... Is it like? Do I think I, most do of I us. I, th- that I think most of us in Austin work? are that delusional. There's not enough work. Yeah, and we can thank the gaming industry as well as the Texas government for that. Right. Um, and yeah, there's just not enough work to go around here anymore. Mm-hmm. Anyone that was filming here pulled out. Right. We don't. Bye bye. We're going to Atlanta. Right. 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 Because at one point we even had. Um, Jeez, what's that? Uh, that uh, that Avengers, the X Men spinoff. Sorry, not Avengers. Sorry, people. Didn't mean to get it all twisted. X Men. Uh, the Gifted. The Gifted. The TV show. Oh yeah, pretty good yeah. show actually. I like it. But originally, it started filming in Dallas. Really. Right. The first mm-hmm. couple episodes were filmed in Dallas. Right. And then the Texas government was going was trying to pass the bathroom bill. Mm-hmm. But you know trans people using specific bathrooms or actually right. not using specific bathrooms. Right. So the producers of the show, The Gifted, said, fuck you, Texas. Yeah. Moved uh, to Atlanta. Mm. Yeah. So there's shit like that going on. Plus, they're just yeah. not getting tax breaks anymore to film here. So why, if you're not, why would you? There's other places to film that will give you tax incentives. So when I first moved here it was after after college i went through college right into grad school finished grad school came here studied theater, what did you go to grad school for uh theater oh okay acting and uh yeah i was like torn between here and chicago and i i didn't want to just jump to the big coastal cities because i just felt overwhelmed and i was and like, frankly that's what everyone does yeah, That's it was what like, it's does. super oversaturated, and I also might feel like I'd be drowning a bit, so maybe somewhere where I knew people, and so I had, like, college friends moving here and up to Chicago, and I was, like, torn between the two, and I was like, 
I'm going to be poor. I don't want to be freezing to death. So I'll just... Right. Move. If I might as well be comfortable. Right. And and I was like, plus there's like independent films. I could get like, get into like a short film or like even student films or something. And, you know, Richard Linkletter, you know, I thought it was still going to be kind of like that movie Slacker. Um, that was delusional thinking. <laughs> yeah. No. It's not. It's very gentrified. No, the days of like... The days of like days and confused type filming. Yeah. Um, but thanks, Rick, for you know filming some great movies here. And Richard, uh, Richard, uh, Robert Rodriguez. Rob, yeah. Um, I actually was called in when Alita Battle Angel was being filmed. I got called in to be a <laughs> a stand in. Really? Um, totally. Unfortunately, I just started a new job. And I was like, I can't call off four days already because it just started. Yeah. Yeah, so I missed my kind of sort of maybe big opportunity to at least, I don't I don't know what would have happened now. That probably nothing, most likely nothing, but never know. Never know. Never know. But, I mean, a lot of Austin actors were in it, so that's pretty fucking cool. That's a, that's a tough part of acting stuff is day job. Like day how job. the fuck do you balance? Dude, I can't. Job? I've had to turn down so many auditions because of my day job. Mm-hmm. Like, I just can't. If I I'm missing work and there's a good chance I won't get it. I hate to sound like that, but right. Let's be honest. Um, if I was guaranteed that I was being called in, like straight to callbacks type of thing, right? I'd be like, cool, I'm down. But if it's just like a normal like uh, cattle call. It's like, man, I can't miss work. Yeah. It's for sure I can pay my bills or Right. And throw depending the and depending on who the casting director is, you know, you could they could be running an hour, hour and a half behind. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which for a couple in particular that no that tends to be the issue, but whatever. It's yes. either here nor there. Yeah. Um I just when I didn't have a day job, I could sit around that long. I didn't care. Right. Like I didn't have to be at work till five o'clock in the evening. I could sit around at twelve thirty. Right. On a Monday afternoon and not give a shit. Uh, but now I got to get back. So, yeah. yeah, the audition train is um, not, it's few and far between these days for me. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. That's part of why I started this podcast to do something, something creative. Yeah. Um, that is the cool thing about Austin is that there are a shit ton of creative folks here. There are. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, there's, you know, web series going on all the time. People just trying to do their little independent stuff just to, even if they don't, and not, it's not even to become famous. It's just like you said, you need to be creative. creative. Outlet. Yeah. Right. And, and then, so you did that and then you saw David Cross. And I saw David Cross and I was like, shit. And I listened to some David Tell. Oh, dude, love I love David. David. You ever see the show Insomniac? Of course. I don't. I can't find anyone else that watched that. Oh show. my god, dude, it's, it's, it show was genius. It he, was so he's fucking a funny. Funny dude. Oh yeah, he is a funny, funny dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then Piff this coming Saturday. So I love going and seeing uh, comedians. We, my wife and I, went and saw uh, uh, a couple years ago uh, Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally, uh, nice. the Summer of '69 tour. Um, 69. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I always try to, even if I'm, if I'm not being funny, I try to go see funny people. That's good. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah, I try to stay active, you know, being funny and being creative, but, um, I'm glad you reached out to me to do this. I'm glad you agreed to do this. This yeah. is, you're like, uh. You're one of the first guests I've had, so this oh, is awesome. Oh, shit. No yeah. kidding. I've had, let's see, one, two, I think three, three or, three or four maybe. You might okay. be the fourth. Yeah. All right. I'll take yeah. four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, badass. Yeah. I've, no, talking with people and, and just shooting the shit. Yeah. I actually ran into someone who listened to this at the store yesterday. I had no idea. It, it, granted that it was a friend but <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea she listened badass <laughs> friend thanks for listening thanks Laura thanks Laura <laughs> um, and what did she have to say um, she enjoyed it okay. she liked it All right. and I'm 
I had told her I'd like to have her as a guest because she's a cheesemonger. And she said she'd bring cheese and we could eat cheese. I and like talk cheese. About cheese. Cheese. I is love great. cheese. Dude, someone the other night, because I also teach at my Sunday school at my synagogue. One of my, I didn't teach seventh graders. One of my seventh, wait, no, no, no. I was walking by the cl- a classroom and the, the door happened to be open. It was for fifth graders. And there are these two fifth grade girls that I, that have known me since they were little kids from going to school there. And as I walk by, they yell out to me, hey, uh, did you get any cheese the other night at Whole Foods? Or what kind of cheese did you get at Whole Foods the other night? I was like, wait, first off, what the fuck? But second, I was like, no, I didn't, didn't, I didn't get any cheese. Oh, but man. dude, it smelled so good. Oh, yeah. Um, I like a good, um, I like a good, um, um, uh, uh, what's the Spanish cheese? Um, Manchego? Yes, thank you. A good Manchego. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's the ticket. I think I've only had Manchego once and it was fucking disgusting. You didn't like Manchego? It was in a... Well, I didn't like this Manchego. Oh, well, dude, you It was in a jar from H-E-B filled with olive oil and it tasted like yeah, no, fucking no, 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 skunk. No, 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 dude, you gotta go to like <laughs> Whole Foods or Central Market to the cheesery uh-huh. and get the one that's sliced and wrapped and it's... Or ask them to taste it. See if you can taste it. They oh. will let you taste the cheese. Oh, yeah. Well, they ought to for the fucking price they're Well, no doubt. no doubt. That's why I generally yell at the wife for buying so much cheese. Because she spends, like, I don't even know how much on cheese. And then half of it goes bad. Oh, yeah. Because you can't eat it in time. You just can't eat that cheese fast. I mean, if you don't want to shit for, like, three weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I will eat a whole wheel of brie to myself, though. I love brie. I like brie, but a whole... I like... I mean, like, not a huge one. Just, a, you know, personal pizza size. That's fucking a lot of brie, dude. I don't, you know, I don't have any problems shitting. <laughs> Emily. Yeah. So you have problems shitting? No. There we go. Yeah. Badass. Um, <laughs> I like, uh, I like baby bell. Baby bells are the shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and it's fun. You get to take off the, the wrap and then the, the wax. Yeah, the wax. You... Yeah. Um, I also like, uh, 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 laughing cow. Yeah, same situation. Yeah, you right? get to unwrap, but it's mm-hmm. but it's not wax; it's just straight up like foil. Okay, uh, but still, fucking delicious. Oh yeah, get some good crap. Mm. Nice crudite. Ooh, that's right, folks. I use the word crudite. I'm not. I don't even know what crudite is. I've heard it. It's like a cheese and veggie plate, or cheese and meat plate. Cheese and veggie plate. Okay, so it's like a charcuterie, but without the meat. Right, right. It would be, yes, it's the cheese and veggie version of a charcuterie. Can you add in, and what's the word called? What is it? Uh, crudite. Crudite. Can you add olives to crudite? Probably. Although, olives, gross. What? But sure. Kalamata olives. Oh, no. They're so good. Oh, God. I tried. I, I, could, I could eat a whole jar of those. Dude, I tried <laughs> to look like an adult once and get a martini and eat the olive, and I, the olive, it was just so salty and foul and gross. Oh, yeah. That's the appeal. Wait, Kalamatas, those are the black ones, right? The They're like deep purple. They're kind of oval shaped. They're nothing like black olives or green olives. You don't stuff them with fucking pimento or jalapeno cheese or, you know, they are the king of all. That's the best part of a fucking uh, olive is the shit you stuff inside, (laughs) frankly. Pickled garlic, that's fucking Ew, gross. What? Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Pickled garlic? Yeah, man. I could eat a whole bucket of that. Oh, fuck (laughs) my life. Gross. I, um, I eat a lot. I don't know where it goes. I think straight out my ass. Apparently, because apparently you don't have a problem <laughs> shitting. Nah. Um, God, pickled garlic. Yeah, man. Pickled garlic. It's so good. So, or just, if you're getting sick, just eat some raw garlic. And, oh, it's hell. It's hell, but... Like, literally just chomp on garlic? Well, I mean, you peel it. Well, right, right, right. You right, peel it. You don't swallow it whole because I did that one time to try to get around the burning bite of like chewing it. I, I tried swallowing it and it got lodged in my throat and I could still breathe, but I was like breathing and like just like vomiting mucus and, and crying for about 30 minutes. And I was alone in my apartment uh, and uh, just over the toilet, just like kind of going like scream going, oh, and just crying like, is this the fucking way I'm going to die? 
<laughs> really? Dude, what a sad, <laughs> sad obituary. I was is. trying to be healthy, man. <laughs> he died choking on fucking garlic. I'm always scared that I'm going to have a heart attack while I'm watching porn. Why? And that's how I'm going to be you found. Just get too worked up? Well, yeah, I'm old and my heart. I actually have a heart doctor appointment tomorrow afternoon. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my fear. You- I will be found with my cock in my hand with a with a used porn video that's already finished on the computer screen. That's my fear. That 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 and getting stuck in an elevator. I feel like getting stuck in an elevator wouldn't be nearly as bad as getting caught <laughs> jacking it. <laughs> I mean, pushing it. <laughs> Through my handhole. Um, <clears throat> do you have uh, like a go-to genre? Do you have a go-to trope you like? To, no, I like it all, dude. You like it all? Dude, I have... A, you know, whatever the taste is. Dude, I time. have a tremendous amount of respect for sex workers. Oh yeah, tremendous amount. You know, people out there talk shit. I have a try, uh, and I'm not being sarcastic or trying to be funny. Tremendous amount. That's a lot of fucking hard, a lot of hard fucking work, dude. That's a lot of hard fucking work. Um, so that being said, I'll watch pretty much anything. Yeah, I mean, as long as it doesn't involve like, as long as it's legal, right. Incest is really in right now, and I dude, think that's I think you're straddling the line. I think you're straddling <laughs> the line with incest. It depends on who you talk to. It's really, I mean, you log in and it's all over, you know. Well, I'm just Emily. What sites is he going to? Fucking Pornhub. It's like, uh, but it's not real, and they're not getting my fucking cookies. <laughs> they're not in my search history, okay? So well, that's whatever <laughs> they're pushing on. Like first timers is like. Oh, quote unquote, uh, stepsister or whatever. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like, think, well, if you're Game if you're, of Thrones really pushed that genre or that that prob- storyline up to the, maybe so. You know, someone's watching it. They're like, yeah, oh my yeah, god, mm. these ooh, uh, yeah, ooh, I hadn't thought about incest in my the hot minute. Is hot. And, and these are some attractive actors in a while. <laughs> And it's been a second since I thought about fucking my sister. Yeah, not me personally. I'm just saying someone would be thinking that. No um, one believes that. Yeah, no, up. gross. <laughs> but a weird. Speaking of National Siblings Day, do you have any siblings? I I do. What I have, a weird segue. I, <laughs> I have two uh, half siblings. Yes, two half siblings. I'm the baby. Nice. Yeah. So you're the baby. By okay. Far. How old are they? Um. It's easier for me to think my brother's 11 years older than me. My sister's 11 years older than me. And my sister's 22 years older than me. Get the fuck out! My dad is like, he was born in 43, so he's 70-something now. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not going to say my mom's age. <laughs> she, she'd be pissed. She'd kill you. Yeah. All right, no worries. Um, my dad was born in 28. Whoa. He's dead. Um, and my 20. mom, 34, she just died. Um, was your dad in any wars? No. Ooh. He his age was just he was too young for World War Two, he was too old for uh, Korea, for Korea. He was way t- oh I think during Korea he was actually in the National Guard in El Paso. Okay, uh, way too old for Vietnam. Right, um, and then yeah, and like, then way too old for everything else. Yeah, right. Yeah, the first call four. There was no way in hell that would happen. He was in the sixties. First goal four, that was in the early 90s. Yeah. Okay. Desert Storm. I know yeah. my shit. This aggression will not stand. Who was the, who was the lead general? Uh, I don't know that much. Oh, man. He had the best nickname ever, dude. What? General Storman Norman Schwarzkopf. Storman Norman Schwarzkopf. That's what the nickname. Storman Norman Schwarzkopf. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was the lead general during uh, that whole thing. Huh. Yeah. I oh. know the... Uh, I'm also... I have a history degree. Really? Totally. You studied history. Totally. Oh. Hoots. What's uh, what's your favorite history era subject? Do you have any favorite thing? I don't think I have a favorite. No? I really like colonial America. Yeah? Um, because if any of mo- if anyone's ever seen... Um, what's that Matt Damon, Ben Affleck movie from way back when? Oh, uh, Good Will Hunt. Thank you. The whole Gordon S. Wood conversation in the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's legit for reals. Like, Gordon, his book, I actually read that in one of my history classes. His book about the American Revolution, he's right. It was, uh, it wasn't a revolution. 
what was it? Drag my memory. It's been a minute. It was revolution. It was just a war of a war of independence. Right. Because we were the same people we were before that. The rich white people were still in power after the war. Right. As they were before. Right, right, right. So a revolution would uh, like mean a complete flip. Right. But there was no complete flip. We just kicked the Brits out. So it would be a, a, a real revolution would be a class war, right? Yeah, yeah. like the rich white, like George Washington would not have been in power in a real revolution, right? Right. The slaves, the the people brought over from Africa, would have been the ones to come to power, right? In a real revolution. So yeah, so it's true. Gordon Eastwood was one, the movie is correct in, in that they huh. did their proper research. That's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were right. They were actually right. Um... Yeah, but there's just a lot of shit going on in that time. You know, the whole country was was figuring out how to be. Right. And now, a couple hundred years later, we're completely fucking up the program. And the framers are flipping in their graves. And the fact that Homeboy said today that George Washington fucked up by not naming Mount Vernon after himself. <laughs> because of branding. It's all about branding. It's all about branding. It's all about branding. And then, and then, as I mentioned to you earlier, then someone mentioned to him, pointed out, that said, hey, guess what, fucker? He didn't use the word fucker to Trump. He was like, hey, guess what, fucker? He's got a whole city named after him. And he was like, oh, that's spectacular. That's really, really spectacular. <laughs> the f- um, and he doesn't even remember what piece of shit just shat out of his mouth a second before. No. He doesn't. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, funny. <sighs> yeah. Let me see what time we're at here. We're just about 30 minutes. You want to wrap it up? Yeah. Look good. Dude, and I totally want to do this again during the day. Hell yeah, let's Dude, do it. Let, now that be, I, it didn't even occur to me, it I was didn't just even like, me either until I drove over here. I was like, I'm so tired at night. <laughs> I'm like a Saturday or either even a Sunday afternoon at like 3 o'clock. Yeah, for And sure. I'm like, Roar! Oh, hell yeah. Um, I'm way more. Dude, we were so engaging before we started. Yeah. Like, y'all out there in in podcast universe would have been like, holy shit, why is this not on regular television? This is why I just need to fucking just hit record. Honestly, Before I even say it, just like, as soon as a guest walks in, just hit record. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Live and learn. Yeah, absolutely. But this is, it's all a learning process. There's a whole fucking episode of, of, um, Tenacious D that's about this. And it's as a musician as well as as a problem. Yeah, you're a good singer, dude. Thank you. Yeah, wow. I I felt like I wasn't even that great tonight, but dude, holy shit. Yeah, I know. I never, what a voice. I was doing music before acting. I, uh, I, I started playing trumpet in fifth grade. And then by the time I was 17, I was fucking sick of like marching slash concert band. Sure. Sure. I wanted to be Kurt Cobain. I'll be the cool so guy. I, so I picked up guitar. All right. And you know, I had my poetry and you know, I was like, I'm fucking pissed. You know, I got to sing this out. And, uh, yeah, so, but thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's good. I actually yeah. just bought my first guitar in December. Really? Never played a lick in my life. Acoustic? Yeah, yeah totally. Nice. Yeah. What kind of guitar? Uh, an Epiphone. Nice. Just a nice starter Epiphone. Very nice. Um, I haven't taken a lesson yet. Um, I need to, because it's literally just sitting in my bag in the corner of my bedroom. Yeah. Um, and I should. But I'll get to that sooner or later. It goes back to being lazy. It, uh... You see, you see the calluses on my fingers. See, that's what I want to get to, man. You feel it? Yeah, I can't even feel anything. But see, the problem is that's my masturbation hand. Oh, I'm actually I'm a righty, like literally in every part of my life. Oh, you do except throwing frisbees. You could do almost do. You could do the stranger. I can, but I can't. I I can't get the right motion. Oh yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Anywho, it makes sense. (laughs) Uh, well, anyway. Thanks so much for being the yeah, guest. Yeah, James. Absolutely. Thanks great. for having me. Hell yeah. But we'll do this I, again. I, no, I'll definitely have like, you back. Soon. For sure. Hell yeah. When I'm, you know, funnier. It's it's late. It it's is late. late. It's really not. Well, I guess now it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that's it. Thank you so much. James, thank you. Thank you. It's fun. Bye. Ciao, y'all. Ciao. Oh, wait. Before you go. Um, do you want to like plug your social media or anything? I don't have any social media. I'm not a social media guy. You don't want to plug your LinkedIn?
No. Send send me a connection request. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a four, enter the first circle. Right, right. If you have a four hundred thousand dollar gig that I'm not anywhere qualified for, make sure you send me that. So I can look at it and realize, oh man, I'm not qualified for this shit. Yeah, I got no social media to plug. I wish I did, but I don't. No. Well, Just, you'll be back. I'll be back here. People get to know you. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, y'all. Good night. Peace.